Hi everyone, in this video, we're gonna discuss chest tube dressing change. So first off, we want to do some patient education. So of course, I'm gonna come into the room. I'm gonna do my hand hygiene. I'm gonna introduce myself to my patient. And then I'm gonna let the patient know that we're gonna do a little bit of patient education before we get started. First off, let's make sure that I've done all of my pre-work. I've checked the MD order. I've completed my hand hygiene. I've used my two patient identifiers to make sure that this is the correct patient and it matches the MD order. I've also got some assistance to position my patient appropriately so that the lateral side of the chest is open and I can gain access to that chest tube insertion site. At this time, I'm also gonna make sure that the bed is at an appropriate working height so I'm not bending or hunching over my patient, that they are safe, and that I've provided some privacy. Now that we've completed our patient education and we've prepped our patient for the procedure, we're gonna make sure that we complete a few things before we get started. First off, we wanna get a baseline set of vitals. We also wanna perform a respiratory assessment and then get a pain score. This procedure can be uncomfortable. We will do our best to make it as pain-free as possible for our patient, but we need to get that baseline score and administer pain medications if appropriate. So I'm also going to be looking at the dressing that's already in place. Is it intact? Is there drainage present? Is it occlusive over the site? And I'm also gonna be checking for crepitus. Crepitus is when we have that air or gas trapped under the skin around the insertion site. I am also gonna be checking my chest tube drainage system. Now I'm ready to go ahead and change my dressing. First, I'm going to go ahead and apply my mask. Now, there is different research on the need to use a mask. Most sterile procedures are moving to using a mask. So that is how we're gonna teach. The uh, American Association of Critical Care Nursing does recommend wearing a mask for a chest tube dressing change. Now for purposes of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and have my mask around my chin so that you can understand my instructions. Now I'm gonna go ahead, I've already done hand hygiene. I'm gonna apply clean gloves. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove the old dressing. I'm going to keep it as close to the patient as I can to eliminate pulling and unnecessary pain. Now your chest tube is sutured into the patient, but we still wanna be very cognizant that we are not pulling or tugging on that chest tube. And then we're also gathering the gauze, removing that, and then we'll discard this in the appropriate receptacle. going to go ahead and perform hand hygiene. Now at this point, I'm ready to go ahead and set up my sterile field. I have my non-fenestrated sterile drape. We'll go ahead and open that in a sterile manner. Being careful not to contaminate your sterile field. And then we will go ahead, make sure it's not touching your patient or any other supplies. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set up my sterile field. Make sure that nothing is touching your sterile field. We wanna make sure that we've set ourselves up for success. I have my trash can. I prefer to have it right here in between my legs so that I can make sure that I'm keeping my hands once they're sterile above waist level. I'm not crossing my sterile field with contaminated supplies and I'm dropping everything high into the trash can so I don't break that field. Also a reminder, we don't want to turn away from our sterile field. Make sure that you have a clear line of sight. While I complete this dressing change, I can go ahead and apply a new dressing while still keeping my sterile filled in my line of sight. Before I apply my sterile gloves, I like to drop all my supplies sterilely onto my filled. Now 
Now I have my petroleum gauze. This is an exception. Uh, you're not going to drop this onto your sterile field because it's um, a little wet, it's moist. So what we'll do is open it sterilely to keep it sterile, but we will set it up just next to our sterile field. Next thing I do is I get my chlorhexidine. This is my cleanser. You can do this sterilely with sterile gloves or you can open it sterilely, not touch the actual cleaning portion of the cleansing swab and do it without sterile gloves and that's what I prefer. Uh, while I'm allowing this to dry, that's when I go ahead and take the time to put my sterile gloves on. So I'm gonna go ahead and click so that the chlorhexidine comes onto the swab. And then I'm gonna go ahead and clean the insertion site and the first two inches of that tube. Okay, make sure you're counting a full 30 seconds and then you're also allowing it to dry. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and discard of this. So now that I've set up my sterile field, I'm gonna go ahead and apply my sterile gloves. So make sure when you do this that you still have direct visualization of your chest tube insertion site and you're not contaminating your sterile field. And pull that on. So now I'm completely sterile. I'm gonna go ahead, sterile, sterile, drop it high into your trash, and then I can go ahead, sterile to sterile, and pull my sterile supplies over, okay? All right, so I've already cleansed the site. While I applied my sterile gloves, the site has now dried. Next step, I'm gonna go ahead and pick up my petroleum gauze. Now, some of the research um, actually states that mas maceration can occur from petroleum gauze, but the evidence is not statistically significant at this point and the research continues. So know your facility protocol and your doctor's orders before you go ahead and apply your dressing. So we are gonna teach you how to apply the petroleum gauze because some facilities are still using this, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and it can come in small portions like this or some of your kits may have a thicker, longer portion of petroleum gauze. It's all the same. Just make sure that you're creating an occlusive seal around that chest tube insertion site. So I'm gonna stay sterile. I like to go ahead and kind of bunch it together. Go under my chest tube insertion site. I'm not touching the chest tube, I'm not touching the patient. And then I go ahead and just press it onto itself. Now, if you have a new package that hasn't been practiced with repeatedly, this should still be nice and moist and it should stick to itself and not come off. Okay, the next step, again, I'm still sterile. I'm gonna go ahead and take my fenestrated gauze and I'm gonna pull it into two sections. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put one under the chest tube. I like to kind of hold it like a baby and then hold it and touch. Now, this hand touched the patient's arm, so it is now contaminated, but we're almost done and we can we can finish this up without contaminating our, our patient, okay? So go ahead and give that a little bit of, not a, not a push that's gonna hurt the patient, but kind of press it ever so slightly onto that petroleum gauze to get it to hold. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take my next piece of fenestrated gauze and I'm gonna put it like, a saddle, like on a horse. And I'm gonna go ahead and place that just over the top of my chest tube, okay? Lastly, I'm gonna go ahead and take just a regular piece of sterile gauze, there's no fenestration, lay on the top to create just that occlusive dressing. 
And at this point, I'm done with the sterile portion. I'm gonna keep my sterile gloves on just while I tape. Um, you're welcome to tape without gloves, just make sure that we're doing hand hygiene. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear my sterile filled. And then I've placed my non-sterile tape over here and I pre-cut the tape. Um, just make sure that if you do pre-cut your tape that you're not taping it to the side of the bed or to your arm or you're gonna see nurses do that. Um, please do not do that. So I have it sticky side up and place it to secure that dressing. There's a lot of different ways that you can tape. Um, what I want you to do is just one, make sure that it's occlusive it's secure and uh, that you're not over taping. Over taping can actually cause some breakdown in the skin. I like to tape one on each side. One kind of up and under so that chest tube is not pressing directly up on the skin and causing breakdown or an indentation. And then just one over the top, okay? You may also see nurses that, I'm gonna pull a piece of tape so you can see. They actually put tape around the chest tube, attach it to itself, you can see that, and then go ahead and attach it to the patient. And this ensures that that tube is not pressing up against the skin and causing breakdown. So again, if I was to do that, I would put one more piece of tape just over the top to make sure that it's secure and occlusive. So now that I've completed the chest tube dressing portion, it's very important that I reassess my patient. So I'm gonna go ahead and complete hand hygiene. And then I would put on clean gloves, do a respiratory assessment, compare that to my baseline, check the vitals again, and also get a repeat pain score to see how the patient tolerated the procedure. Now, I've checked my patient. I'm also going to recheck my chest tube drainage system. Before you leave the room, you wanna make sure that all your connections are still either taped or zip tied securely. And we wanna make sure uh, that we assess the drainage, the amount, the color, the character. And we're also checking for our gentle bubbling in A chamber when attached to suction. No bubbling in chamber B. We're gonna watch for that titling, which we want to see, that's a normal finding. That's gonna coincide with the patient's inspiration and expiration. And we're gonna watch for any bubbling in chamber C, which could indicate an air leak. If we see any bubbling there, we do wanna make sure that we notify the doctor. Okay, so now that I have completed my reassessment, I'm gonna make sure that my patient is comfortable safe. I'll complete hand hygiene, lower the bed, and then I'll make sure that I go back and document the following 